Hello. Hello. Hey. Happy Tuesday, I think it is. With all of the working at home, the days can blend. <laughs> Yep. Oh, cool, Michael. It looks like you're on the holodeck. Well spotted. Richard, if you're talking, I can't hear you. Yes, I've been talking all this time. Can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, very good. Very good. Uh, so anyone who's in the call feel more than welcome. Talk to you to soon. Into, uh, into the thing and also uh, into the doc and also as Matt just will ideally uh, log into your browser so we can see who you are. Um, but if not, it's probably not a hard to call in. So um, I think we should get started and by and large establish a, a precedent of, of starting ST not CT. Uh, to be mindful of everyone's time and not just sit here for like five minutes. So the territorial part first. Uh, the first one, uh, as you can see, uh, I did my thing and just write in stuff which we'll be talking all about as bullet points. You're also more than welcome to start doing this if you want, but still we are following the discussion as is, but that, that saves time and effort later. So um, yeah, remember you write, to write yourself into the attendance list for obvious reasons, because that gives us a kind of an overview of, of the long-term development of this call. If you're on the CNCF Slack, A, uh, feel more than welcome to just toss your hello, your name, your whatever into the public channel and just say hi uh, to everyone else while you're here, while you have interest. Uh, also ideally set an avatar for your, for your account. In a perfect world, that'll be a photo and also um, add a short biography so we know who you are, what you're doing, where you're doing it, blah, 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 the usual. Um, that's everything janitorial from my end. Any other janitorial items? Cool. So um, TOC status. Um, I was on the TOC call last week, this week, last week, last week. Um, so um, I poked them again to please vote for the third chair and please vote for the tech lead. Of course, we had zero replies there. Um, they promised to do so, but I haven't seen any updates yet, but I didn't check today at least. Um, on the question of the user survey, uh, basically it was not fully specified, but basically we, are, we can do user surveys, uh, surveys if we want to, if we think they're useful. And then, uh, then the liaison can, can use it if they want to. Um, and if in doubt, just ask. And they will adapt the um, official process so that that documentation actually reflects uh, the guidance from last, uh, from, last, from last TOC call. But that hasn't happened yet as far as I could see. But we are basically OK doing user service. And also, as we were having our monthly call with CNCF with my Prometheus set on yesterday, I also poked Chris about um, taking this to do back to TOC on the internal TOC calls um, to please get some movement on uh, on the third chair and on the uh, tech lead. Of course, as per the official documentation by CNCF, we are actually not a real working group yet. Of course, we don't have the requirements for it but that's blocked on or by TOC, so I think that should be fine. 
Yep, that's the QC status. Next one is Cortex into uh, incubation due diligence. And just to get a feeling of the room, who actually managed to read this document before we had that call? So that's two. Keep your hands up so I can count. Four. Okay, from the people I can see who have video, it's four. Uh, it's five. Okay, so that's good. Um, hopefully, it'll become more and more. Um, as a reminder, we are trying to establish a practice where people read the documentation and working documents and such before the call, so we don't have a case of assisted reading, but uh, we have um, an extra discussion on the contents and not, not everyone trying to scramble to get an understanding what, what was being talked about. So, Let's move to the document. I'm going to also put this into the chat for everyone's convenience. Does anyone have any high level comments else? I would just start walking through this top to bottom or maybe Bartek, you want to walk through it both is fine. I don't care. So, um, hi, can you hear me? Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like uh, before we start the walkthrough, I just want to add uh, that the only main thing that is missing from my opinion uh, is uh, user interviews. And I wasn't sure how to do user interviews before, but I think I will first create a form that has different questions around like what users like, what users don't like, what, which companies they work for. And I'll share the form uh, with SIG observability. And once it's approved, I'll share it with the users to get collect user feedback. Having said that, uh, is there some precedent on how user interviews were done before in other projects? Some existing forms I can look at. I don't think they have a complete form. Alois might be able to help. He's on the call. Uh, no, I don't know uh, that there is a dedicated form. I can, can ask in SIG chairs if they do, but I'm not aware of a form, a specific one. Okay. Uh, I, I craft some uh, typical questions and send it around then. Yeah, that works. Um, you can also poke me offline if you want, um, but yeah. We also have some questions from, from Prometheus team, which we can reuse, but yeah, we, we can take that one offline if you want. Cool. Now Bartek can, or you can lead the reading. Then apparently it's going to be me. So, um, yeah, let, okay, let's do, do a quick walkthrough, seeing as three quarters of the people on this call didn't uh, didn't actually read this document beforehand. So um, timeline status we can probably ignore. Um, the project is self-governing, uh, governing, and I would recommend that as the SIG, uh, we put the comment that we agree that there is self-governance within the project. Uh, I'm doing the same game of consensus as I did last time. Um, Gotham, can you make me an editor or I'll just make, keep making suggestions? I can um, make that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm logged in with the Grafana, not the private one. It should be fine now. Okay, just a moment. Yes, perfect. Okay, so sick observability comments. Um, so same <laughs> game of consensus as last time. Um, I'm going to mark. I'm going to write it. I'm going to mark it, and then we can we can have the game of consensus. So the comment of the SIG, as I propose it, would be SIG observability agrees with the. Uh, um, Richie, do you mind sharing your screen so that ah, we can see? That's a very good point. <laughs> yes, I do mind for religious reasons. Um, there we go. Can you see my screen? Or yes. one of my, hopefully only one of my windows. Um, yeah, so. The project is self-governing. And my comment as SIG would be that the SIG agrees. Is everyone agreed or are there any, is there anyone who doesn't agree? 
Perfect. So um, the next is uh, about, about having a code of conduct. And I would propose that we also put the comment on every single point. And my proposal is obviously that we agree that there is a code of conduct course. It's literally the same as, as the one for, for CNCF. Does any, everyone agree? Any, any naysayers? Very good. The next question is if the project has any production deployments which are high quality and high velocity, given that two companies are doing uh, actual business with Cortex, or at least two of them, which I'm aware of, Groovebergs and, and Grafana Labs, I would also propose putting that we agree. Anyone disagree? Am I allowed to disagree given that I run one of those? Sure, go ahead. No, I'm joking. Do you need a knife um, for you? Flash, or will you take one of your pretty good kitchen knives? <laughs> so I yeah, usually it's a good idea to link to the adopters in D file if they have one because they should actually have like the publicly available ones if they have it. I think Cortex will have have one. That's what we did for other projects. Yeah, so that that should they should usually point out which ones are using it in prod, and that's the easiest way to link to. It. That's part of the document. I yep. Don't know so. Uh, we only list uh, projects in, like uh, companies and adopters or MD if they are using it in production. Yeah. Further, uh, we are working on adding case studies. So we did one case study with uh, Gojek, uh, and this or like yes, this week I have my second case study scheduled with uh, Reve, uh, which is a German grocery uh, chain, and slowly we are going to expand the case studies section. Also on a higher level note, I'm, I'm trying to walk through this document um, ideally as if everyone would have read it. That being said, we will obviously take the time for anyone to, to get up to speed. Um, but uh, the concern is literally covered here. So um, yeah, does everyone agree with section three that there are production deployments which are high quality and high velocity? Good. Um, yes, um, sorry, what does high velocity mean? That was one of the questions I had when I read this um, last year. In my interpretation, I would say it's, it's adoption speed and also growth within the deployment and with my Grafana hat maps, uh, Grafana maps hat, hat on, I can confirm as a first hand witness that this is the case. Is, uh, is Brian here from WeaveWorks? Hopefully. Because uh, he, he's publicly said multiple times they literally continuously deploy master. Um, yep. And I yeah, think no, that's I, about, I, about as high velocity as you get. Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, again, I wasn't, I wasn't disputing that that is the case. Just wanted to make sure we understood what high velocity meant in terms of definitions. If that meant, yeah. So that's a good point. We can actually, yeah, no, it's like velocity of adoption by net new entities or velocity of commits to production or, or, or test or velocity of new code appearing. Uh, I don't know, Amy's here, maybe she could comment because all of these questions, if I'm not mistaken, come from the template for due diligence. Yeah. I think part of what we'll be doing as the SIG is to maybe try and help hone down those questions a little because some of them seem a little bit ivory tower-ish um, and they can probably be clarified a little bit or maybe there can be some consideration or guidance section um, on parts of this. Um, yeah. I, I it should probably be split into a working document. Um, maybe not so much live discussion for the first round, but I agree that it makes sense because we will be revisiting the same questions again and again. Just one more comment on this, and I don't want to derail, so we don't have to discuss it, but I, I'm curious, what is the process for listing adopters? Like, do the companies agree? Should be they be the ones that submit this PR, or do we just get their approval and then can add it to the adopters? Like, what does that process look like? So we, at least like we asked uh, companies to submit the PR, but in, in case uh, we open the PR, we explicitly 
need someone from the company to say LGTM on the PR before we merge it. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm not muted. You, we have to, you know, there's some companies that don't want to talk about the projects they use as well. So you have to be pretty sensitive. Exactly. That's what I was asking. <laughs> I think for the uh, for 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 the SIG, um, by default we trust unless there is a there is a um, reason to mistrust. Of course, else we have issues anyway. Um, but it's a good point. But I I think that's actually within within the policy of the project how they how they get to list people. The requirement is just that they that they confirm that it's happening, and ideally this happens with with names and not just with claims. And uh, you can also check the history of adopters.md. You will see on HPR either the company submitted it or we have an explicit approval. I think, uh, interestingly, Sysdig had in one of their blog posts that they're using Cortex recently. We should uh, ask yep. them to. Uh... Uh, well, no, they, they wrote, they phrased it differently, like they're using part of Prometheus yeah. in Cortex code, I think. Yeah, yeah they... but we're derailing uh, the, 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 the document a little bit. Sorry. Sure. Yeah, no worries. I, I just want to actually deliver the spec courses, the one deliverable which we have for the next POC call, and I want to make sure that we that we have that one in. Agreed. Point so, of order. Do you want to do you want to keep the action items in the document, or would you prefer to keep them in the meeting notes? I'm in the meeting notes. notes. Absolutely in the meeting notes. Okay. And also, I would uh, after we are done, copy uh, the consensus items over back into the meeting notes. Uh, but that's basically after after uh, being done with the due diligence document. So, is the project committed to achieving CNCF principles and do they have a committed roadmap to address any areas of concerns raised by the community? Um, so, I have no idea what CNCF principles are and Googling it didn't help. So I guessed uh, that they could be talking about this. So I, I read your answers. Um, to this, um, and basically for anyone's benefit, the, the top level bullet points in this section are copied from, from CNCF documentation. I would agree that all of those are met except for the last one, uh, but that is basically a to-do item for, for TOC. Um, but in my opinion, Cortex operates cloud native, so the, the gist of the question is also positive or the answer of the gist of the question. So for, same for this, I would propose that we that we have consensus on SIG observability agrees. I think definitely for future projects, it would be good to know exactly what the CNCF principles they're referring to are, yes. But, but yeah. Yes, arguably, arguably uh, Cortex helped shape part of this. Um, so I, I would give more leeway here because it's more or less uh, rubber stamping for, for something which is as advanced as Cortex anyway. That being said, uh, I would take an action item back to TOC to ask them to please clarify what they actually mean with those things. Have, have we gone and asked the, uh, the maintainers if they're excited? I don't know, you're a maintainer. Are you excited? Ken, Ken's here, are you excited, Ken? I'm very excited, Tom. <laughs> Gotham, you're one of the maintainers, are you excited? I am. <laughs> I think, so that's three of the, what is it, eight or nine maintainers that are excited. Is there anyone else I missed on the call? No, it doesn't look like it. So, um, again, I would propose that we have consensus on um, on point four also that SIG observability agrees. Any other opinions? I agree. Let's move on. Fifth document that the project has a fundamentally sound design without obvious critical compromises that will inhibit, uh, inhibit potential widespread adoption. I would be arguing that we are already seeing widespread adoption. Um, for anyone who, who read this um, or who's currently reading it, that's to also totally fine. Um, all agreed that we also agree basically on the reply by Gautam or by the Cortex project.
Gut. <laughs> this Hold is on. this is another super open ended question. Um like how do we respond to this? Uh, the the second part is easy, right? We're definitely architected in a cloud native style, I mean to a fault. Um useful is subjective though. I would also argue that that the question itself can be a lot improved a lot, but that's the question we have and which we need to answer. So we need to to have some interpretation for um, wh what what the question means within the context of of what CNCF is and how it operates and what they what they uh, let radiate and let incubate. I would say that. Um, both my knowledge of the project and what we are seeing documented here is is actually a positive. I left some comments to to maybe tighten up that section a little bit, but I would still be um, I would still suggest we we agree with the section as is with the request for for Cortex to to tighten it up a little bit. And one more point is all the adopters.md uh, users, they're all running in Kubernetes. Um, they're monitoring their Kubernetes deployments with Cortex. We, having said that, we are also working with uh, a new adopter who is running it on bare metal. So it, it's not tied into Kubernetes, but it works really well with Kubernetes. And by, by as a function of it being basically the Prometheus model, Kubernetes kind of designs for, for the underlying premises of, of Cortex and Thanos and Prometheus. So call for consensus, SIG observability agrees, but requests tightening up the above section. Or yeah, I mean, having done a fairly deep dive through the architecture, I would, I would certainly concur that it's obvious, um, obviously architected in a cloud native style. That's, that's, that's clear. Um, I do agree though that the, the useful you know, feedback for the TOC is, is that the useful moniker is um, not terribly useful uh, necessarily <laughs> um, uh, in this, you know, in terms of in terms of due diligence. So, I mean, it, it almost seems like there's a request implicit in the question to have a little market marketing or selling of the solution. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that reads that. You know, is this useful? Why would you care? Um, you know, you, you know, if if you're running Kubernetes or if you're if you're running a cloud native data center, uh, a, a data center architected in cloud native sort of styles or, or buying time in somebody else's, um, maybe this document is up to, it's up to it's up to the project to put in here. You know, how is this useful? Why is this useful? It's almost a sell. What do you all think? Is that is that are you also read here, or? To me, it reads as if most of this document and the questions have been written from the perspective of, hey, that might be a good question, but not from the perspective of if I'm in the position to, to actually answer those questions, are those well-scoped and useful questions? And again, useful is subjective, but I think uh, they're just a little bit ivory, ivory tower-ish and not really battle-tested yet but we can feed this back and we absolutely should we should yeah. have a small document and we should just basically send the pr um back to toc with hey please adapt your your template like this i think the I mean useful can also be measured by we have users right so clearly they find it useful yeah but we are again we, we are in discussions about the meaning of the thing there uh we're tightening up the question a little bit uh, or tidying and tightening up um, would make it a lot easier for all sides to actually come to an agreement. So, to cycle back, SIG observability agrees, but requests tightening uh, up the above section. All agreed? Uh, just, just a point of order, Richie. Like, are you asking for whether we agree or whether the SIG observability people agree? Everyone on this call. Okay. Yeah, obviously I agree. Literally, yes. literally everyone on this call, because that's the decision-making body we have. 
Okay. Um, that's, that everyone who's in this call is part of SIG observability um, by definition, in my opinion. Agreed. And that's part of why we why we need to uh, write down who's who's taking part to to if we ever need to um, see who actually was on the call and who agreed or might not even have seen it. But like rough consensus, either they hum or or they implicitly agree. So next one, document that the project has an affinity for how CNCF operates and understand the expectation of being a CNCF project. Uh, that is again <laughs> a very political and, and, and touchy feely question, but I would agree with the GIST course, uh, obviously Cortex already operates in a very cloud native way. I mean, we could also add that with the overlap with the Prometheus maintainers between the Cortex maintainers, um, like we already are used to the you know the week the monthly calls with chris and the presenting at kubecon and and all of the things that go with it right like we we have been through that motion those motions um and understand i think what this entails yeah good point like essentially you know expectations right yep. i think that's like assuming that's what it's uh assuming that's what they're getting at getting at um you know we we've, we've done the Prometheus keynotes and the, you know, talking to press about Prometheus launches, like, you know, whatever the CNCF needs from us, I think we've got the experience doing. Oh, yeah, yeah and to even reinforce that, I mean, if, if you just throw a rock on the internet and look at the number of talks, uh, meetups, and other various things just on YouTube alone, um, it, it's clear that the project has not only understood uh, the spirit of that, but has been demonstrating it for a couple of years now, uh, at least in my judgment. Thank you, Matt. I realize that's dangerously close to sunshine up a tailpipe, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, just even on the, if one wanted to get started and dive into what is Cortex and how is it architected, there's, I think, something like 12 or 13 talks. You can you can go spend, you know, a day or two just listening to talks. And, and um, yeah, so that's been my experience. Yeah, absolutely. So, call for consensus on number seven, SIG observability agrees and requests tightening up the above section. Also put an action item for Gautam to, to refer to what Tom said. Anyone disagree? Very good. Next one, document that it that is probably Cortex, is being used successfully in production by at least three independent end users which focus on adequate quality and scope. Um, I would also say that we have agreement. No. Um, I would and also... On, and the, the last thing that we just said requires tidying up of above section. Yes. That doesn't make sense. What would you suggest instead? Expanding mm -hmm. on... I mean, tighten up the above section. The above section is exactly one sentence, very open ended, in my opinion, can expand on the question. True. I think the, the opposite of tightening, right? We need expanding. Oh. We can tighten up that one sentence if we want to, but I think we want to expand. No, no, no. Right? It's a fair point. And that is precisely why I'm doing it this way, because I, I fully agree, and I just copy and paste it from, from the above. And that's where it's coming from. That's precisely why, why, um, yeah, no, thank you. So let's, let's invalidate and, and do it again. Sick observability agrees and requests expanding on the above section. All agreed? Anyone disagree? Very good. So next one, um, I think we have documented or there is documentation that there are more than three um, successful users who have uh, quite some quality requirements. So again, I would, I would put the comment that SIG observability agrees. All agreed, anyone against? Very good. I'll just add that there is a space between Grafana and Cloud. Thank you. No worries. 
Um, next one. Have a healthy number of committers. A committer is defined. Uh, hang, hang on, just to just to put, just to be clear. To, so I think Michael, I made the point separately. Um, the three independent end users, um, in in terms of using it, does that mean since we even Grafana Cloud are kind of obviously driving the project that they don't count? Like in, in terms of those three, I think there's still plenty that are, but. Um, should we just call out that, like, if you're if you're paid to work on Cortex, you're not an independent end user. That's all. Yep, it's fair it's, enough to say that. Fair point. Yeah, I'm, I'm not disputing that 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 mm -hmm. this requirement is met. I just want to make sure that we're super clear, uh, so that there's not the appearance of um, uh, a conflict of interest. If you're taking it this far, then end user. Are end users the ones running the software or using the software? Um, uh, so maybe as an interjective, we had the very same question about a project that uh, we reviewed for uh, app delivery and had a discussion with TOC and we are still in like the final wording, but the interpretation that we are kind of stuck at, which is not the final one, is obviously an end user is like an actual user, it's not, it's not like a provider because we had exactly that very discussion. So you would not consider like Weave for Weave Cloud when they are selling it to customers as an end user because it's really somebody who's like not building the software but merely using it, and also not. Uh, you wouldn't also consider them like a main contributor, like if you build software for yourself. But the CNCF is not entirely clear there. But it's really something not selling software but using the software. Mm -hmm. Would you would you count customers of Weave and Grafana Labs as end users? Uh, so the point is, this is where it gets really tricky because you would actually count somebody as an end user who is an end user of the open source project and not a commercial offering on top. But there it's where it's a bit blurry, honestly. So, yeah, in particular for something like Cortex, which is specifically meant to be multi-tenanted and something that someone could use to provide as a service to others in addition to someone like in, 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 our, in our company, we're, we're using it directly as, a, as an end user. Um, uh, yeah, I, again, I don't, I don't wanna hold this up, but I think the requirement is, is, is clearly met. I just wanted to make sure that we're not double counting uh, Grafana and Weave in the list of adopters as, a, as counts towards end users for this yeah, requirement. Yeah, I think that's perfectly yeah. reasonable. So let's, uh, let's delete the sentence about Weave and Grafana. Um, and uh, we still we still meet it, but I think but yeah yeah again um, just I just want to make sure that it's the administrative side of of, of of this that I just want to make sure we're we're, we're super crisp um, about what's in or out uh, to Michael's point uh, I think a few days ago in the document. Yep, fair enough. Would this uh, be the correct? I went ahead and didn't put um, comments, just edited it. I deleted uh, the service providers from the upper section and put under Weave and Grafana Cloud that, um, uh, that we have end users. Of course, there are two, there are still two interpretations. I, I would delete that. Like, I think it's contentious. I would just say that uh, the uh, while while these two uh, are running Cortex, we don't consider them as end users. You can just add a comment like that. Yes, but the customers of Weave and Grafana are by my definition end users. Uh, contentious. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, I, 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 I don't I, know. Looking back on, we agree on the essence, but the questions are not very good and they need to be sure. improved. So, yeah, that, that's fair. I mean, I, I can actually say like, for example, right now today, I'm actually, you know, in addition to rolling out Cortex internally in, you know, in the coming in this quarter, we're also a end user by that definition of uh, Grafana Cloud's hosted Prometheus. But I don't know if it's actually fair on the merits to say that when I'm using that, I'm an end user of the Cortex project. You know, to me, it looks like a remote right endpoint, and I have no idea what's behind it. I don't. I can know. I can know. I, I, I don't even need to know that it is Cortex. It's just a Prometheus remote right endpoint. Um, and a query endpoint. So um, I agree. This is really more of a yet another slightly ambiguous language from the CNCF. On the other hand, it's it's stimulating this discussion, which is probably the useful part. Um, so yeah, I, I'm happy to move on. I just 
Uh, but I would actually prefer to have specific guidance in the questions. And again, I think we should we should actually submit something back to TUC, which then demands um, the specific uh, argument if 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 it's required, as opposed to basically having a uh, an happy accident and and talking about this. Yeah, that's, that's a great point too, but I mean, just being in the context of the due diligence for Cortex, I don't think we need to serialize it. Like, you know, I don't, I don't want to wait for the, C, the, the the TOC to define it if we, if again we have way, way more than the, the requirements to exit sandbox for the actual projects. I, I see them as slightly orthogonal, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree with Matt. Okay. Just to make sure, because I think I had, yeah, as it wouldn't be green. Uh, we did have the call for consensus. So the next one, have a healthy number of committers. A committer is defined as someone uh, with the commit bit, i.e. someone who can accept contributions to some or all of the project. If you can see that tab, um, that looks pretty healthy to me. So call for consensus. I would say that the SIG agrees. I think I think uh, we agree, but like it would be nice to kind of measure activity maybe at some point. Uh, I know, I know people like who are contributing. So I kind of I know that most of them are active, but you know, just uh, for future projects, it would be nice to maybe check that. I don't know. I'll go ahead and and delegate that to the tech lead to be. <laughs> well, we don't have that exactly trying to announce, so you know. <laughs> Too late, Bartek. <laughs> sure. So for this week, um, or next call. So, do we agree with this section, or do we not agree? Um, my my suggestion for a consensus is SIG observability agrees. Bartik will get numbers or will get more detailed numbers. All agreed? Anyone disagree? Yeah, I can say like that I think it's fine, but yeah, we can get numbers for sure. So I agree with the statement anyway. Very good. Demonstrate a substantial ongoing flow of commits and merge contributions. I think that one is obvious. So um, again, call for consensus suggestion being SIG observability agrees. You, if you could like, if, uh, for those on the call, you can also open one of the dashboards. I'm trying to, to low level get people to do this beforehand but there you go i can also make this broader by the way if you want i just realized it's, uh, that. last six months yeah wow i mean i can also do this but this will probably break all of your screens and all of your shares but if you can just open uh, the commits or like even the PRs, you can see that we're doing 15-ish commits every week, 20-ish commits. And uh, we do squash merges. So that means we are merging 15 to 20-ish uh, PRs every week. Which I think is uh, at least on par with, with uh, most Aronas, except for Kubernetes. So, um, SIG observability agrees. Very good. Next one, documentation of CNCF alignment. Um, Bartek suggested to just copy in uh, the incubation uh, stuff, basically. Um, personally, I would agree with this as long as there is also a statement by by Cortex that all of this still applies. Um, I would be content if anyone from the Cortex project would just verbally confirm or write it in and then do the legwork after. 
Yeah, I think it's exactly the same as template for the PR that we had to do, so. I mean, we can also require, um, actually, let's modify this. Instead of referring to other resources, how about we just uh, request that Cortex um, writes it down, course that that basically makes it a self-contained document. So um, I have consensus, stick observability agrees and requests writing it down specifically. I have one question. What do they mean by existing sponsorship? Um, that will be our SIG observability liaison. But they say community size and any existing sponsorship. Put that maybe as to do. Of course, we can take that as like we as in the SIG can take this to the next TOC call and yeah. explicitly ask for sponsors now that the due or now that the due diligence will soon be done. Oh, we're actually running into timing issues, but at least I can stay until the full hour. So call for consensus. Sick observability agrees and requests writing it down specifically. Call agreed. Anyone disagree? Agree. Very good. Technical. An architectural design and feature overview should be available. That is obviously the case. I'm going to open it quickly. There it is, we have an architecture. Famous picture. A famous Twitter picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. We should make it ugly and retweet it and say, hey, we updated it. <laughs> anyway, um, call for consensus. I would say we agree. Anyone disagree? Very good. What are the primary uh, what are the primary target cloud native use cases? Which of those can be accomplished now? Very simple, scalable, or oh, you can read more quickly. You will all be shocked and surprised that my, my suggestion for a consensus is SIG observability agrees. But I'll give you some um, more. I would, I would actually say down sampling is, is on the roadmap. Um, yes, but then so is everything. On the, uh, like, I would say when, when I wrote this down, this would be like in the next six months. -ish. Okay. Yeah. No, and downsampling not in the next six months. Yeah. I uh, I think for the first the, the first piece of this, the primary target cloud native use cases, you could actually add a fourth one that you know that mo most of the backend services for both object storage as well as uh, for chunk as well as index, you know, work on major public cloud backends today. Like, there's not a need to run your own you know, object storage or Cassandra or something like that, you can use um, Bigtable or uh, DynamoDB or GCS or S3. So in terms of being just readily usable in public clouds. Um, I'd agree, yeah. As, a, as, an, as an operator, it's, it's one less thing I have to run. That was yeah. one of the things yeah, that that's made. As everyone is probably noticing, I'm taking liberty to to just write this in and not wait for for the Cortex team to write it in. Yes, thank you, Richie. That's fine. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to to move through this course. Ideally, I want to uh, like we are like halfway through this document, I, and I want to actually approve it or disprove it uh, before before this call ends. So, um, all agreed. Very good. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm in the wrong tab. So. Okay, next one. What a current performance, scalability, blah, blah, blah. You can read it yourself a lot quicker. I would also tend to agree with this one. All agreed? Yep. What exactly are the failure modes? Um, are they well understood? Have they been tested? Do they form a part of a continuous integration testing? Are they appropriate given the intended usage, i.e. cluster-wide shared services? 
need to fail gracefully, etc. Um, even as someone working at Grafana Labs, I was interested in reading this, and I really liked it, if I do say so myself. So I, I mean, the failure modes will never be well understood. That's an unachievable aim. Like, does anyone understand uh, the failure modes of? You, coming from networking, failures are endless, but you can contain them, and I think. Yeah, it's always the network's fault. That's also correct. And DNS. And DNS, yeah. The main cause of all plane crashes is gravity. TTI, time to innocence, one of the main metrics of success in networking. Anyway. I think, I think we've, we've got over three years of production experience running Cortex. Um, that we, we've experienced all of the obvious, for, all the obvious failures and fixed most of them. There are new and exciting ones to come for sure. Um, well, no, as written, I would just agree with what's written. Yeah, I mean, as, as a bunch of engineers, we can sit around and say, how could we make this better? Like, for example, you know, one could one could write, one could have CI or CD testing negative failure cases that simulates or mocks out S3 barfing uh, or having operational issues from the cloud provider side. Um, but... And I, 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 with these, I'm not, I'm not sure how deep we need to go. I, I, I've read what you know. the, the, the point is basically, are we with our sick hats on happy with what's the current state of the art to let someone progress from sandbox to incubating? That's the exact scope of what we're currently debating. And within that scope, I think it's, it's well achieved. I agree okay. that they can do more and I think they should be doing more before graduating, but for incubation. I think that's fair, personally. No. So next one, what trade-offs have been made regarding performance, scalability, complexity, reliability, security, etc. PP, um, that's empty. Um, yeah, so good time you didn't feel anything, but like there are trade-offs, right? And, and I commented one of them, but yeah, what, what, what do you think? If none have been made, that should be written down explicitly. I think I, I agree with what you said, Bartek. Except, of course, we put a lot of work into simplicity recently. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm not saying it's super complex, but then you prefer complexity, uh, from what I've seen, versus uh, you know um, lower performance. And I think something we could we could also mention is that obviously you prefer consistency over availability, right? So that's that's some clear trade-off here. No. I mean the 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 simple one-dimensional trade-offs are are never entirely accurate. You know, the consistency versus availability one is not, you know, there are cases when we prefer the other, like each one of these is tuned to the use case yeah. and configurable. Like you can have it such that, I, I guess if we wanted to have a, a trade-off generalization here, it would be configurability. Like we, we favor being able to configure the system to behave how the user wants and leaving that to the user to decide. But we don't, I don't think that necessarily implement, uh, sorry, introduces complexity anymore because we ship default configurations and we make recommendations right so you don't have to understand these trade-offs if you don't want to and we've helped many users deploy it and not had to explain every single configurable I agree but still, still people look on the you know thousands of flags and and are crying and screaming so you know there's still some kind of complexity there I'm not saying you know it's uh, there are definitely ways of mitigating that but there, there is some trade-off here um, which, which made me make sense, but... I mean, if we want to define complexity as a number of flags, then sure, we have complexity. So does Kubernetes. Yeah, I mean, I think again, if we're... Just if because we're, I'm looking at the time, I'm going to do something very cherry. Um, that section has currently not been answered. Um, there should be something in there, but I think um, we can expect a, a reasonable answer. So I would, as a call for consensus, maybe say that we expect positive feedback, but it's not yet written, or we expect, uh, we expect sufficient feedback. Sufficient feedback on what? Yeah, I mean, we've got, to, we've got to actually answer this right before we can agree yeah, to yes. So sorry, sorry, this wasn't answered. Yeah, no, it, it's not an issue. Um, yeah, I, I was I, just gonna say also, I, this isn't graduating 
to graduate this is exiting sandbox so you know we should uh, yeah no and i mean expect in the positive way so we we um uh, how do you phrase it some native speaker you know i would say the sentiment is we've already met expect you know we've met any expectations but we need to document them and we okay. can't agree yeah, to this. It's, that's very good mm -hmm. Call for consensus. Seek observability agrees that expectations have been met, but it needs to be written down. I agree. Kaufman, I'm going to tag you. What are the most important holes? No HA, no flow control in adequate integration points. I mean, what's a hole? Um, the absence of a thing. You're welcome. We haven't bundled a window manager with it yet. Yet, but that is part of the. I would, I, you know, if we're going to look at like what's the what's the biggest pain point operating a Cortex cluster, then I agree it's the statefulness of the ingestors. I actually yeah. don't think that, that 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 wasn't how I read the spirit of this question. I, I think it's sort of like when when a project is leaving sandbox to go to the next phase, like say there was no HA story. Or say like, nice. hey, this works, but there's no way to deploy it unless you build it from source and know how it works. Good quality Helm charts would be up the biggest hole then. Like we don't. Yeah, know. so I, I was going to say like, as someone looking at Cortex, like you know, we're 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 taking a lot of time to go figure it out. It's not like immediately. But again, that's that I wouldn't call that a hole in the architecture or a hole in the um, the offering. I, I don't see those types of holes that would prevent it from leaving sandbox. I think. Oh. The, the intent, is to make sure that we don't have things leave sandbox that are like fundamentally not done or not ready to be, you know, in that in that middle tier. But I don't think that's the intention of the question. I think it's just like be honest. What are your biggest openings? And if it's that type of stuff um, oh, that doesn't block moving from from sandbox to incubation stage. Yes, I don't think anything's blocking. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll add this to the growing list of. Um, feedback for TOC around ambiguity. Uh, yeah, no, but I, I think the question actually makes sense. Of course, mm -hmm. like honest, what what do you what do you think? Where do you have an open flank? That's that's not to block. It's just to to honestly self-assess. And I think that has been met. And I think the so sick observability agrees, not a blocker. That would be my suggestion for a call for consensus. All agreed. Agreed. Very good. Agreed. Code quality. Does it look good, bad, mediocre, blah, 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 blah. So have we talked about tabs versus spaces? <laughs> Go fun. <laughs> I'm, uh, although I, I feel like uh, we, we don't make enough use of global variables. Yeah, That's be. a very good point. We should take that as an action item for, for Tom personally to migrate like, everything. We've got to, we've got to laugh at some of these questions, right? <laughs> Uh, yes, but looking at the time, I have, I have a call right after and we have six minutes. So um, I would say SIG observability agrees. All agreed? Yeah. I think your, bar, your comments, Bartek, are valid. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried to assess it from high level, but like it's definitely good. Oh. And there are even, you know, kind of proofs that uh, you are seeking for even better quality. So yeah. Well, and just to make it explicit with, with the chair hat on, I, I'm fully okay with uh, Cortex not answering, but the tech lead to be uh, answering. Because that's, that's basically worth even more from, from the six point of view. Cool. Dependencies. What do exist and do they seem justified? Um, maybe not agrees, but SIG observability is happy with the documentation provided. So call for consensus, SIG observability is happy with the documentation provided. Everyone agree? Yep. Very good. What's the release model version scheme, evidence of stability, blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, I would suggest 
this for the consensus and I would move Bartik's comment in line to make this part of, of the stuff we are happy with. Yeah, definitely solid versioning. All agreed? Yes. Sorry for picking up speed a little bit. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to make it if I don't. Next one, see, I see status. I would also be happy with documentation provided. All uh, agreed? Quick, quick, quick question. Can other yeah, folks run CI, CD for Cortex? Like, I, I noticed that there are circle jobs and whatnot, but you know, if I wanted to run the same tests in my own environment on my own staging, is that something that users of Cortex can do today? Yes. Or if I wanted to provide additional augmented data, say, hey, I'm running it with, you know, in, in these scenarios, is there a way for, for, for me, a user, to feed that data back to make the project better? Or is it still the CI runs within a certain set of places and it's not necessarily reproducible? I mean, you can run the unit and integration tests yourself, like wherever you want to run them. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty straightforward. The, there is provided what we call the test exporter, which is something that exports a sine wave and then queries for it. Um, and you can run that in your, that, that would be the integration test you would run in your own environment to check the things working. Um, and beyond that, that's about the limit of what we've got. Um, and if you wanted to extend it, my encouragement would be to, contribute back to master and, and have that benefit everyone but but there's no reason why you can't build your own test on top of integrate your integration environment does that answer your question matt uh sort of and again I, i'm not sure that this is maybe maybe we, maybe we take this up in a subsequent chat but um like in other words if i wanted to, to to reproduce all of the tests or to debug something as a user um you know and again maybe i need to educate myself a little more but uh you know can I run the full suites of tests if I have my own, I do, if I have my own circle account, like, is there a, Hey, Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. That's in fact, that's how I run them. Okay, cool. Then. And, and that's how I mean all of the non maintainers have to run them that way. Um, yep. and we, right. then I'm happy. I, I just haven't gotten to that point yet uh, in, in, in Cortex as a developer. So. Yeah. CI is configured to support that. So, Call for consensus, SIG observability is happy with documentation provided. All agree? Yep. Very good. What licensing restrictions apply? Blah, 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 Apache 2. Um, yeah. Well, yep, can confirm. By definition, we are happy because it's the default license of, of all of CNCF. But um, just to, to make it explicit, call for consensus, SIG observability is happy. All agree? Yep. Very good. What are the recommended operational models, specifically how it is operated in a cloud native envi environment such as on Kubernetes? Well, it's made to be run on Kubernetes, so <sighs> call for consensus, SIG observability is happy. Yep. We actually had to do a lot of work to make it not run on Kubernetes. Um, <laughs> it's now the case. Oh. It, well, it, it will not on Kubernetes, but yeah. I don't mean, Richie, let's not try and rush this, right? Let's do it. Let's do, you know, let's. Have yeah, no, we do. I, I do believe I'm doing it proper if quickly. I just looked at the clock and realized we wouldn't be able to, to go through all of the rest. Um, I think this is a very board. good first, first go at it, though. No. Yeah. I think I'll, I'll send an email to the list requesting to form an opinion on this by the latest, by the next call, ideally maybe within the next week. Um, so we so we have a consensus or at least a rough and implicit consensus on everything uh, within the week, uh, so as not to as not to read uh, another five a four pages. Um, interactively in the next call and just like basically already everyone has read it and we just agree yes or we already put comments where we have concerns and such. Um, uh, maybe some feedback for the TOC should be that this doc should be reviewable in one hour. Yes and not as verbose and not as undefined but again it's 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 an ivory tower document it's not a battle tested document where the people writing it in my opinion have had to actually answer all those questions and actually walk through everything. 
or maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm not seeing something that might also be the case. Yeah, thanks a lot, Gordon. That was uh, really well prepared. Thanks. Yeah, same for me or for me. I yeah, also. also also, just a point, this took like uh, one full day or more to write. Uh, so I like I expected to do it in two weeks, but in the future, we should set expectations that it's going to take some time when preparing the doc. Am I right in thinking Cortex is the first project to go for incubation from the sandbox? I don't think uh, so. The first, uh, you mean CNCF wide? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know offhand. I was um, trying to think of one. Like, as every project have to go through go through this checklist, it seems quite onerous. And I love that word, onerous. <laughs> it is a good word. Uh, I, I can't speak to CNCF wide. I do know that the the sandbox graduation process, I guess, in in recent quarters, has undergone some changes. So it, it could be that we're trend setting here. Uh, but <laughs> excellent. Just, follow up. just to be. Just to be sure, like this is not like there is no rules how to create this recommendation from the SIG. So we just grabbed the due diligence doc and just, you know, um, had that as a checklist. But I don't think like that was required. So I, I, I could see that those SIGs were just, you know, composing their own um, decision recommendation based on something. And then that was that's what it and the rest was done by the TOC. We went kind of. Uh, well, I need to drop off. Step ahead. Yeah, me too. Sorry. Cheers, yeah, I, I, as well. I, I will uh, say too that much of what we're doing is paying it forward for graduation, yeah. graduation, because many of these questions are actually from the Jaeger doc that graduated uh, yeah. from yeah. to yeah. graduation. So, so we're probably doing a much higher bar here. But yeah, you know, go big or go home, right? So, <laughs> bye. thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Thank Cheers. you. Yeah. And yes, I thank agree. Everybody. And thank you, uh, Richard. Yeah. And everybody, have a great day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.